Welcome back everybody, and if you are new here, welcome to my channel. I like to post all sorts of homemade recipes weekly, so if you do consider subscribing, please be sure to click that bell notification to get all of my latest videos. Okay, today I am going to be doing another chile relleno recipe. My older videos, I will link them below. Now growing up, we would make stuffed poblano peppers, which is what chile rellenos are, and we would stuff them with whatever we had available. Sometimes it would be leftover picadillo, which is a Mexican style hash, We'd mix that with rice and stuff the pepper. Some days we did potato and cheese, and that's what I'm doing today. That is actually my favorite. And if you want something more traditional, stuff your peppers with cheese, and you know you batter them in an egg batter, fry them, and then steep them or set them in a tomato chicken broth. Very delicious. But today I'm just going to fry them up crispy, filled with potato and cheese, and they're going to be so delicious. And here's how I do it. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is peel a pound of potatoes. This is basically just one large and medium potato, potato combined. Um, and I'm also going to boil my peeled and cut potatoes with one clove of garlic. And if you want to use a potato peeler, go right ahead. I find that just a, a little knife works for me. Okay, so my potatoes are peeled. I'm just going to chop them into large chunks, give them a rinse, add the clove of garlic, fill the pot with water, and I'm going to boil these until fork tender. So while my potatoes are boiling or coming up to a boil, I'm also going to saute some onions. You don't have to add sauteed onions to the potato cheese filling, but I think a nice golden brown sauteed onion adds so much flavor to the potato and cheese. So that's what I'm going to do. And basically I just used half of a medium to large size onion. I'm going to just saute it on the stove until golden brown and that's it. Okay, so my potatoes are fork tender. I'm gonna shut the heat off. And I'm just going to drain all the water out. I'm going to strain these and I'll show you how I prepare the potatoes for this. Okay, so now I'm going to start mashing these and seasoning my potatoes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add around a tablespoon and a half of butter. I'm not going to add milk to this. I do want the potatoes to be on the stiffer side, but butter will definitely add some flavor. Let's see here. I'm also going to add some salt. Maybe a quarter teaspoon, something like that. It's to your preference cracked black pepper, and I'm going to give it a mash. And remember, I also have that clove of garlic in here as well. Now I'm going to add my sautéed onions. Give that a mix. And I am going to allow this to cool, at least to room temperature, before I add the cheese. Okay, this smells good already. So I want to allow this to cool, at least to room temperature. And you know what? I'm also going to season this with some smoked paprika. You could use regular paprika or just leave it out. But I think this will go quite nicely in this. Oh yeah, it smells so good. So again, just going to give this a mix. And this is done. And once this comes to room temperature, I'm going to add my shredded cheese. Okay, so now my potatoes are room temperature. They are cooled. So now I'm going to add 8 ounces of shredded mozzarella cheese. You could also use, I don't know, if you want cheddar, if that's all you have. 
Um, sometimes I use um, Oaxaca cheese or even queso fresco sometimes. I, it just depends what I have in the fridge. But today I have some low moisture uh, mozzarella cheese that I shredded, so it's going right with the potato. Okay, so this is mixed. So now let's work on our poblano peppers. Today I am working with, let's see here, six poblano peppers. So what I'm going to do is roast these on my stovetop. I'm actually going to char and burn the exterior and peel the charred skin. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn on my stovetop flame. Probably on medium high. And I'm just going to start charring this skin. And as it starts to blister and char, I'm going to turn it to another side. Eventually, I want pretty much the whole exterior of this poblano pepper to be charred and that'll make it easier for me to peel that waxy skin off. And that's exactly what you're trying to achieve. Now, if I don't see that it's blistering and charring quick enough, I am going to turn my heat up because you don't want to cook these because then they get too soggy and you won't be able to fill them. So you'll have to watch for it. And if you do want to use a broiler, I suggest you crank the broiler up, put the depending on what type of broiler you have, make sure the rack is close to the flame or to the broiler and you'll want to char it quickly. Because again, if you take too long charring this, then the poblano pepper will cook and sort of get mushy and overcooked and it'll be harder to stuff. So I'm just going to start charring these. And you can hear it pop. That's the skin blistering. So you'll see already it's starting to char and blister and that's what you want. Okay, so here is what my charred poblano peppers look like. And as you can see, they're very charred and the skin will be, definitely be easy to peel off. But I'm gonna let them set here and I'm going to cover them and let them sweat for about 15 to 20 minutes. And I do want to say, when you're doing this, when you're charring your poblano peppers, you will definitely need to turn on your exhaust fan. <laughs> I did not mention that earlier, but you'll want to do that. Or at least you'll want to do this where there's proper ventilation, whether it be outside or in your kitchen. Okay, so this is covered. Again, I'm going to let these just hang out and sweat for about 15 minutes and then I'll show you how I peel them. Okay, so now let me show you how I'm going to peel the skin off of these. And it's really simple. Sometimes I could use a spoon to scrape off the skin. Um, I'm just going to sort of wipe it with some paper towels and then give them a quick rinse and pat them dry as best I can. So here's one. And because it had time to just sit there and sweat, as you can see, the skin does come off easy. Just like that. So I'm just going to peel the skin off of all of these. And then I'll show you what we do next. So all I'm going to do is just take a little knife and sometimes when you peel these, they'll sort of break open anyways. You might want to start there, but this one I did pretty good. It didn't have any breaks in it or tears. So I'm just going to start right here in the center and kind of just carefully with the point of my knife because you don't want to break it in the back and just make a little opening. And once you open it, now that they're peeled, you're going to remove all the seeds from the center. And then they'll be ready to stuff. So here, I'm just going to grab, if you could see the center here, you'll want to just remove all of that the best that you can. And then you can just rinse it out, pat it dry, and that'll be completely cleaned. And then you can start stuffing your peppers. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to remove the seeds. 
Okay, so my poblano peppers are cleaned. I've removed all the charred skin. And basically what I did was took a knife. I made a slit right in the center. I carefully did this not to poke the back of the chili pepper. And I removed the seeds. And it also is helpful to remove them with your hands and give them a rinse to make sure you get all the seeds from the inside. And then you end up with a nicely cleaned poblano pepper. And now we're ready to stuff them. Here are my stuffed poblano peppers. So now what I'm going to do is take a toothpick and insert it to just sort of enclose this as best as I can. Now, you know, it depends on how, it depends on how torn or how whole these roasted poblanos are. It is a very delicate process, so just be careful, but I'm going to do the best that I can to enclose these. So I'm just going to sort of Kind of push it close together and then pin it just like that and I'll use two to make sure they're secured and once they're cooked you can just remove the toothpick there we go Okay, so now all of my poblano peppers are stuffed and I've secured the seams with toothpicks. So now I'm going to work on my eggs. Here I have six large eggs that I've separated from whites and yolks. So I am actually going to beat my egg whites to stiff peaks and then slowly mix in the yolks and it's going to be a very foamy stiff egg batter so you'll want to use a hand mixer for this if you want to do this with the whisk good luck my grandma actually used to use a fork and she was successful but it was a lot of work and it also helps if you have chilled egg whites and a chilled bowl to work with this. This will help give us stiff peaks a lot easier. So here I go. Okay, so my eggs are at stiff peaks and basically once the egg whites can stand straight up without folding over, that's a stiff peak. So one by one, I'm going to continue mixing this and at this point, you could also help stabilize this by adding maybe some cream of tartar or even a little bit of cornstarch or flour, but I just normally beat the eggs until they are stiff and fluffy and it works, but it's definitely up to you. So now back to mixing my eggs and I'm going to start slowly incorporating yolk by yolk into this egg batter. Okay, so my egg batter is nice and frothy and beaten well, so now I'm going to start dredging my stuffed poblano peppers in flour, dip them in the egg batter, and we are going to fry these. And at this point, you'll want to work a little quickly. Um, I should have had the flour already because the egg batter will deflate the longer it, it cools or comes to room temperature and sets there. So I'm just going to take a half cup of flour, shake it on to this baking sheet. <clears throat> Set that aside. 
and let's go ahead and coat our peppers. And then once I coat them, I'm going to put them right into my preheated oil. And you'll want to coat these with flour because that will help the egg batter stick to your stuffed poblano pepper. So I've dredged all of my stuffed peppers. Now I'm going to dip them one by one into my egg batter and right into my preheated oil over there. And yeah, it's going to get a little messy, but it's worth it. Right into the batter. There we go. So as you can see, I have a rack off to the side. Once they're done, that's where I'm going to be placing them. And this is going to be a very careful situation. You'll want it to cook before you flip it. And if you find that you've exposed it, you can just scoop up a little bit of that egg and cover it. Just like that. That should do it. And I want this to cook on the side before I give it a flip. The first ones are always nerve wracking for me. <laughs> beautiful golden brown color. And this will go quickly. You'll want to preheat your oil to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything hotter, you just gotta be careful. So as you can see, these are cooking quite well, and that egg batter is nice and golden brown, and that's exactly how you want it. So I'm just going to continue cooking my chile rellenos, and I'll show you what they look like once they're done. Okay, so all of my chile rellenos are fried and done, and they look beautiful. Okay, so I have served the plate, and here are the toothpicks, so you'll want to remove those. And dinner is served, and I want to show you what the inside looks like. You can hear how crispy this is. The inside is soft and gooey and delicious. I'm digging in. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. So good. The potato and cheese with the onion, you've got to try it. So, so good. And the exterior, the egg is just so crispy and light. So, I definitely hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you like it, and thanks for watching. Bye.